it is hard it is hard to balance it all and how much do you share and how much do you keep private i think it's a really individual thing mm -hmm. uh, some people are happy just to lay it all out there and 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 just be totally open and vulnerable and tell them everything from the minute you get up to the minute you go to bed and mm -hmm. what you're secrets are and everything uh, there's <laughs> others who are just kind of you know what you don't need to know this so i think having boundaries setting your own personal boundaries is a really good idea Well, today I have my friend Laura Thomas here with me. Laura has written so many novels. She is a wealth of information. She is a talented writer. I'm so excited to hear what she has to share with us about her writing journey, her experience with the publishing industry, and any advice she has for beginning writers, aspiring writers, or even those writers who are in the trenches along with her having published a couple of books. So I am so grateful that you have joined us today. Laura, thank you so much. Oh, my absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you, Rachel. Before we dive into the nitty gritty details about the publishing industry, why don't you just tell us like a few, um, you know, just a few things about us. Where do you live? You know, sure. what are you currently, you know, is this your full-time gig? Is it? it? Is. Yes. Oh, it is. Yes. So tell us, tell us all the things. Okay, all the things. Well, how long do you well, have? Um, <laughs> at least some of the things. <laughs> okay, some of the things. Um, I live in British Columbia, Canada. Um, and I am originally from the UK, which you might be able to tell. Um, and we, I've actually lived here for half of my life now, officially. Okay. So uh, this is home for sure. Um, I've been married to my high school sweetheart for, oh gosh, 34 and a half years. Um, uh, and started dating him when I was 14. So we've been together forever. Oh my goodness. Um, At that point, you've been together long, much longer forever. than you weren't. I know. Oh my goodness. I know. Lovely. So long. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. Um, and we're empty nesters. So we have three grown children um, who have all flown the coop. And we had two bulldogs, a Frenchie and an English. <laughs> okay. um, but they're my writing buddies. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm fortunate enough to be doing this um, every day when I get up. So it's, it's a joy and a privilege. I was a late bloomer. I'm sure we'll get into talking about my writing journey in a little yeah. bit. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much me. Awesome. You just recently had a novel re oh, recently and released are two words to say right, right next to each other. Very hard. <laughs> but you just had a novel release, right? Yes. It's like two weeks ago. Yes. Two weeks yes. ago. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you and very much. And what is the title of that novel? It's actually a Christmas novella, my first novella, which was very exciting. And it's called The Christmas Cabin. And mm -hmm. it's part of my romantic suspense series. And it's actually based right here in British Columbia uh, because we do the best winters. We, we have lovely white Christmases. And um, this is the first time I've actually written about uh, here, my, 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 my stay at home place for a mm. setting. So yeah. So I'm exciting. originally, I'm originally from Chicago. I live in Houston uh, now. Yeah. And so last year was, we moved here a year ago, this time a year ago. And so right before Christmas and to go with a Christmas without snow was so hard. Oh, it was yeah. so hard. So when you say like the lovely white Christmas, I'm like, oh, you'll have to read Christmas. my novella, Rachel. Oh, for sure. I am putting it <laughs> down right now. It'll take you right <laughs> you see, back. I was just type, I was just writing. I'm like, by the novella. <laughs> So I will definitely link to it in the show notes too, so that others can get it as well. So, um, so let's get into this. Like, how did you, how many novels have you um, published now? Oh, goodness. Well, this is uh, book number nine. Okay. Um, so um, quite varied. Uh, Christian romantic suspense is my current genre. Um, okay. And so I have three novels and then this is a novella in mm -hmm. that particular genre. Three Christian teen fiction uh, novels. And um, then we go a little bit random, uh, <laughs> a middle grade short novel, uh, historical fiction, and also a nonfiction marriage book. So wow. I'm kind of, I'm definitely multi-genre. Let's yes. say that. Yes. <laughs> and so do you consider yourself a fiction writer or, or how do you like classify I, yourself? Because oh gosh, you have so nonfiction, complex. you have all these different genres. Like, how do you consider yourself? You just say I'm a writer. 
<laughs> and that's, the that's the easiest that's the easiest way to say it right. honestly because I also write uh devotions and I write Sunday school curriculum um I do do a, a fair bit of dabbling in the non-fiction world but honestly mostly fiction is yeah. my is my jam yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's almost like a misconception about writers and especially fiction writers most people think like oh if you're a fiction writer you write one particular genre and like that's your jam mm -hmm. but I think it's no, actually no, no. more true that <laughs> most writers who are who write fiction also write nonfiction pieces, and they also tend to deviate a little bit in their genres from story to story. Some don't, yeah, but there are yeah. some that do. Yeah, I sometimes I'll uh, I'll be honest. Sometimes I think to myself it would be a whole lot easier if I was just on one track with one audience doing one simple thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way I am. It's just yeah. I I really believe that this is just the way. Um, as a Christian, this is the way God has just been leading me all over the place, mm -hmm. and I've just been like in for the ride, going, "All right, here we go. This is the next thing." <laughs> did you always want to be a writer, or did you? You said you were a late bloomer, so can you tell us a little bit about that? That process that journey? yeah yeah for sure um so um when I was a child when I was very young I was a little bookworm and I had this secret dream to be an author one day and mm. I actually wanted to be Beatrix Potter Aww. specifically um and that was I that was just my thing but I honestly didn't think it was uh, achievable on mm. any level at all. And so as I got older, um, I buried that dream. I literally didn't tell a single solitary person. Um, and then I got into my teens and I just got distracted with, well, my husband, I guess now, um, <laughs> and, and with church and with dance and with a whole bunch of other things. And the whole writing thing just kind of, it just really went deep buried beneath everything else had my kids, emigrated, did all the things, um, homeschooled my kids for 13 years okay. and still did, still it was really buried mm. until one night my husband took me out for coffee and um, we were having a conversation about big dreams and what is yes. your next dream? You know, one of those. <laughs> one of those conversations. Uh, one I, of always, those. I always have those conversations with my husband when we're in the car, like on a long car trip. It's like That's he's a, trapped. Yeah. Poor guy. Absolutely. Captive audience. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is my, we have the opposite problem. I'm usually the wall who kind of doesn't open up so much. Mm. And my husband's the one who does the digging. So uh, he, he asked the question and I thought, gosh, he's known me for so long. I, I, I'm going to have to fess up on this secret dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I said, well, you know, I, I'd like to write a book one day. And he was just like flummoxed. Oh. He said, what I, I where did this come from so you know I said it's always been something I've wanted to do but I thought maybe once we're retired and have time I was homeschooling my three kids mm -hmm. and busy volunteering doing other stuff um, I think probably homeschooling my kids actually rekindled it a little bit just literally reading to them you know yes. you know mm -hmm. yes I know <laughs> um, and just going through those books yeah and just just kind of taking me back to my own childhood and thinking, I wonder if I could ever write a book of my own. So, so can, can I just interrupt yeah, you and ask this yeah, quick question? Course. Why did you, cause you had made the statement that you thought that it was like an unachievable thing, like mm -hmm. that you weren't able to do it. What, what did, what was the reasoning behind that thought? Like, why did you think you couldn't be a writer? Yeah, that's a really good question because it's not like I had a teacher or a parent who turned around and said, you suck at writing. Like that right. didn't happen. <laughs> but I I am, um, well, I said I'm a wall. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't share this information <laughs> with anybody. Um, that's why now as an author going into schools, because with my, some of my younger audience books has been such an important thing for me because I'm like, hey guys, I wrote a book. You can do it too. Uh -huh. This is so doable mm -hmm. because I, I never met an actual author. Like I said, Patrick Potter was my hero. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was just so pie in the sky. Oh. Um, and so it just- So it, it was just... more like a, a self, like your- like yeah. it was a limitation you put on yourself almost. Absolutely. I can't okay. blame anybody else. It's not like anybody turned around and said, you, you'll never make it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just never had the courage um, or, or to do it until my husband turned around that night over my caramel macchiato and said, if you want to do this badly enough, you'll make time to do it. 
and oh, wow. I will support you. And I was oh. like, oh no. And I, like, you I can't, knew, you can't avoid it at that point, right? Like- oh no, oh no. Uh, the butterflies <laughs> started in the stomach and I'm like, okay, I think I can do this. And literally the next day I, cause I wanted to be a children's author still. Okay. Um, I applied to the Institute of Children's Literature who is, I still thoroughly recommend. And I got accepted into one of their courses because I, I went into banking age 16. I knew nothing about right. writing because, or where to begin. Because the the school system's a little bit different in England, right? Like you kind of get into a yeah. trade at 16. It was back in, back in the old days when I yeah. when I was in school, yes. Yeah. So okay. so literally my I literally was a 16-year-old playing grown up as a banker, like yeah. Uh yeah. so so I knew nothing about where to begin. I knew what I I knew I loved to read and I knew what I wanted to to read and but I didn't know the nuts and bolts of how do I start writing, mm. <laughs> especially for children? Because I knew that would be a whole thing. Right. So that's that's literally where it began. And so I would have been in my mid thirties at this point. Okay. So 20, 25 years, literally, I kept it a secret. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> but I love how God just, first of all, that he brought your husband into your life. I Second know. of all, that he <laughs> brought in a partner into your life that knew how to dig deep and get that answer right and then third of all that he's like laura i created you to do this thing you're not going to get away from it you know i know yeah and he yeah yeah that's so neat absolutely absolutely and i do look back on all those years because people do ask you know do you wish you'd gone straight into university and done creative writing or Mm -hmm. all the rest of it but i'm like you know what i have no regrets because i have i have so much life experience before i picked up my pen yeah um and I, I really think that not one of those things that I've done has been has been wasted. I've been able to use it in my writing in very weird and wonderful ways. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, I just think it was God's timing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've just been sort of uh, following his lead from that point, really. <laughs> that is so neat and such a cool, just a cool story. Thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> oh, so once you revealed that you had the secret desire and you started to learn the craft of it, um, kind of how long did it take you before you felt ready to pitch something? Did you pitch a children's book first? Did you kind of what, what happened after you made that decision? Yeah. Uh, so I learned how to, my first thing I learned how to do was to write for um, sort of picture book audiences. Uh, so that was kind of the, the the type of writing that I learned first of all. So um, my first things published were actually for children's magazines, short stories okay. in children's magazines. And honestly, if there are any children's aspiring authors uh, listening, I would still recommend going that route first of all because a it gives you something to put on your on your resume when you're sending it out you know it's like I've been published in and you can and also it's um it's just a a, it's just it's just very encouraging to know that people out there it's hard to get a book published magazines are almost like a stepping stone I feel um and if people are willing to even pay you to have (laughs) something in a magazine it's just it's a a very exciting encouraging way to begin that's a good piece of advice right there because it is Mm -hmm. a hard it is hard to get published even harder to get published as a children's author Mm -hmm. and it is nice to have that little bit of um, um, just a sense of accomplishment, yeah. you know, that small, you know, they talk about that first small step, like taking a first small step is a lot easier than trying to get to that first big step, you know, and Absolutely. that you have more, you, you'll you continue the progression, you'll continue progressing towards that if you start with a small step. It's just having that one little win just makes it a whole lot easier to go on to the next thing. So. Yeah. Totally, totally. Um, so that's kind of how I, how I began. And then uh, as one of, I took another course with them and I chose a short story that I had already written for teens and made that into a novel. That okay. was kind of part of the course. So by the end, this is all, you have to remember, this is me writing in the little tiny weeny cracks of time that I had while homeschooling and doing all the Mm -hmm. things so this was very much half an hour here half an hour there nothing here like but you know what I love about this is that your husband said 
if this is important to you, you will make time and you made the time. And I think, I I think it's really easy for us, especially those of us who are moms to be like, well, my kids are young. This is a dream I have, but this isn't the right season. And there are some times where it's not the right season, but most of the time, I think we're, we're the ones making the excuse. It's not really the season, you know, it might be fear. It might just be, you know, we don't think it's a dream worth pursuing. And so we make the the excuses and we say, oh, it's not the right timing. My kids are a little, or my kids are still at home. Um, and you're saying, and like your husband said, no, if this is something that you value, if this is something, this is a dream you want to chase, we're going to make the time. And you made the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing just how much you can achieve even, you know, it might take years. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you don't have to be a full-time writer to get the work done. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so yeah, by, by, it took me, I haven't got the dates in front of me a few years, let's say several years, maybe three, three, oh no, no. Yeah, a couple of years for each course, I would say. So probably about two years for one course and then two years for another. Just, you know, gradually Mm -hmm. doing it bit by bit, learning a lot. And then by the end of the second one, I had a manuscript ready to roll. And they taught me how to do a cover letter and then just kind of released me and said, submit. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, excellent. Uh, Yes, that was my experience with college. It was like, here's how to write a novel. Okay see you later and you're like wait wait what am I supposed to do how do I get it published I know all I knew was to google Christian publishing houses mm-hmm. so that's oh yeah that was I another began. suggestion they're like oh get that like that that guide the marketplace guide and then just look yes. people up and I'm like oh oh okay although don't despise that because those oh, no, market no. guides that's that got me into a lot of magazines actually yeah. there's a magazine one so, but <laughs> so that's like the tools. first step it's like the first oh, yeah, step right it's like look it up <laughs> find somebody to pitch to but then to know like how to do the whole book there's proposal more. how to yeah. picture pitch yourself how to position yourself how to like yeah. anticipate their needs so that you can meet it you know like that's the whole thing it's a whole thing <laughs> yeah, sorry go ahead continue <laughs> That's okay. I'm just kind of telling you like the whole thing, whole story here. So, um, so yeah, in the meantime, I was still doing, you know, like these little stories in uh, magazines, still thinking I want to be a picture book author, Mm -hmm. please. But I do have now this manuscript for um, teen girls. Um, It got rejected and rejected and rejected um, as it does. Um, And then suddenly it got accepted. On a November evening in 2011, we just came back from a vacation in Seattle. I remember it very clearly, just checking my email. And there was an acceptance from a publisher saying, Uh, we would love to publish this novel. And I just screamed. So 2012 was the first book. So did did you have a literary agent or were you querying people? I didn't know what a literary agent okay. was. Okay. I honestly, I really, I kid you not, I knew nothing. Mm-hmm. All I knew was what the stuff that I, the nuts and bolts craft of writing for children and teens, I guess. Right. <laughs> um, a cover letter. Mm-hmm. That is all I knew. So, right. okay. <laughs> so I was, I was very green, very okay. green going in. So did you pitch to like the, you know, all the Christian publishers we know? Of like you know, did you pitch to them first? You know, the what ones I'm that did... accepted an agent did because I'm um, obviously yes. they're the big, the big, big money yeah, daddy cause... ones that only do the the agent. Because right. uh, at that so... point in 2011, most of them had gone to you need an agent by that yeah. point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so so it was just going through. I literally had a list, so it was just going through the smaller uh, Christian publishers. Uh, who were willing to take a little peek. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and that's kind of how it happened. <laughs> and and that's how it kind of has to happen. Like you just have to yeah. be dedicated to keep asking over and over again and not worrying too much about the, re- I mean, you kind of said it, you're like, it got rejected and rejected mm-hmm. like it does, you know, like yeah. that happens in this industry. Yeah. Still and so you, happens. Yes. yes. <laughs> you still have to just keep, you have to kind of get over the yeah. sting of it and keep going at it. Right. Mm-hmm. absolutely so yeah. it got accepted and on this beautiful did. november day <laughs> and then yes. it was released a year later uh not even it was april 
So wow. this uh, this publisher is uh, Dancing with Bear Publishing. At okay. the time, it was like it was only maybe a couple of years old, I think. Okay. It was very. It was a little baby one. Okay. Um, but I, I call her my fairy godmother because she just kind of like waved magic wand and everything for me. I was just, it made all the difference in the world. Yeah. So she was the one who sort of said, you need to have a website. So I'm like, oh, I do. <laughs> like, I honestly, I knew nothing. Yeah. Really. yeah. And, and, and maybe a blog. And I was like, oh, there's a blog. <laughs> oh so yeah. I, yeah, it was, it was a very steep learning curve um, mm. and that was pretty much as far as it went um sort of <laughs> teaching me the ropes <laughs> other than yeah. that it was uh here you go girl <laughs> get <Yeah>. out there <laughs> now were they really like did they do marketing for you or was that something you kind of had to do on your own and you had to learn how to do um I don't think there was very much at all um, in the way of marketing. We're going back 10 years. I now. mean, I, it was a different world. It was a different yes. world, 2011. It wasn't quite the same yeah. online marketing as we know it today. No, it's mostly it like bookstores and things like that. It was. And being a smaller uh, publisher, and also I'm in Canada, they're mm -hmm. in the States. Yeah, that's so, true. So um, I had to, it was, it was, it was kind of cool, actually. Looking back, I sort of, sort of missed the old days a little bit in that um I had to literally pay for my shipping to get all the physical copies up here um and then I would go out and go to schools and um I was in a couple of different programs where I would go to a school and they would buy a copy for everyone in the class and mm. do book signings at bookstores and very hands-on tactile kind of grassroots kind of <laughs> yes, yes. Very um, much boots so. on the ground marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E-books no. e were eh, not so much. They were a big just. Deal. They were just starting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I remember I graduated in 2006 is when I graduated, okay. and I interned with a publisher right after that. And it was just when Sony had released the e-reader and there was conversations in <laughs> amongst the editors about this e-book thing and if it was gonna right. like what it was going to do to the publishing like if this was like the real like water cooler talk was about yeah. the e-reader <laughs> so, so cool it was just starting to pick up really by that point yeah. so you you kind of yeah. were you got in right at the beginning of what became the craziness that is today <laughs> with yeah. online marketing and um the decline of the bookstore and things like that mm -hmm. so it has it has it so you got in with that first one and then yeah. you published a few more with them, correct? I did, yeah. So honestly, um, once I published that book and held it in my hand and and started being able to sell it, I was like, well, there we are then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> You've accomplished your dream. <laughs> yes, yeah, it was my dream to publish a book. It wasn't a picture book, but it was a book. So I was like, great, okay. Um <laughs> I'll carry on with life then. And then she actually approached me and said, do you have a sequel in you? And okay. I was like, oh, do I? Yes, I do. And it was it was about um, these sort of these three girls. And so I'm like, I absolutely do. There was one girl that wasn't very nice. And there's a reason why she wasn't very nice. And I want to tell her story. Oh, wow. So, thus, uh, so we had Tears to Dancing. That was the first one. So Tears of a Princess came about the following okay. year and then she was like bring it on so uh, tears fears and fame was the third book in the series oh I so, love those titles um, those are yeah. awesome titles <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun writing them uh, what, I mean when I think back to when I first wrote the short st story when I was doing my course, I had a teenage daughter and there was very little in the way of Christian fiction out there, um, which really that was kind of the catalyst of why I even went that route. Mm -hmm. um, but it was it was a really fun genre to write. I had to get mm -hmm. my, my teen head back on. So that was the, the series. And also with that publisher, um, I, I, there was the, the short um, middle grade novel. She knew that I'd written a story again in that course, that great, fantastic course that I did. It was again, another short story, which I made into a longer um, mm -hmm. story for middle grade. So she wanted to uh, do that. And then my, my daughter actually got married while I was with that publisher. And oh, so wow. I actually approached her and just said, listen, I'm writing a letter to my daughter to, for her just to kind of read on her wedding day. And it's really getting long. 
do you think there's any point in having like maybe like a little book um and so she was like mm, let me think I can't see anything out there from the perspective of a mother of a bride so mm. let's do it so it's just short it's just like 10 short chapters it's like you got you got like the you won the lottery with that publisher she <laughs> seemed to be like she was in your court huh she was right. there I know yeah. I will always be, I will always be grateful. When you say um, she was your fairy godmother, she really was. Honestly, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was that publisher. Um, and I'm obviously still with them with those books as well. Obviously it was a smaller publisher. Uh, obviously they were kind of more brand new. Did they offer you an advance or did they, was it the, um, just royalty based? Just royalty based. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, that, uh, and as I said, I was so, I didn't even know there was such a thing as an advance. Right. When I Which advances oh, are no. just getting those royalties up front, right? Like that's it really all. It basically awesome. is. Yeah. And I, yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't a deal breaker at all right. for me. So, um, so you still have a relationship with them and you're still, are you still yes. earning royalties off of those books that you yes. published with them? Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. So, yeah. um, that's really cool. Now you, obviously you went with another publisher for the books that you have now, because mm -hmm. your next set, your, the rest of your books are with a, the same publisher, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So you switched to this next publisher. What was the, kind of the business decision behind that switch? Because obviously you had a good relationship with the really, with yeah. the publisher you were at, you still do. So what was the business decision behind making that move? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I believe I was at a writing conference in Seattle, actually, um, and something just really stood out to me that um, one of the, the keynote speakers said about um, putting all your eggs in one basket, mm. <laughs> as it were. Um, and I think uh, there's, I mean, small publishers and, and large publishers, there's pros and cons with both, of course. Mm -hmm. um, with smaller publishers, there's I guess there's that fear of what if suddenly something happens and they just close down, which I know large ones can too, but right. for a small one, it's always a bit more of a, it's a, a bigger risk. possibility. Right? Yeah. yeah, it is a bigger risk. Um, and as I had five books at this point with, with this publisher, um, I just thought it would be smart to just start looking around and see if I couldn't get another publisher as well, um, especially because I was now looking at a fresh genre. So True. yeah, it was it was like, hmm, wouldn't do me any harm. And my husband's a businessman, so he's always kind of there going, you should try and get with a bigger publisher and you know, <laughs> yeah. all the rest of it. So um yeah, so that that is basically why there was there's absolutely no hard feelings, no bad blood, no nothing. It just felt, especially with a new genre, that it would be um, a good idea to maybe try and see if there was another publisher out there that would be interested. And so, <laughs> so the Glass Bottom Boat is the first of my Christian romantic suspense novels, which is such and a deviation was... from what you oh, were writing. Oh. Well, yes, 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 and. Yes, no. I have to okay. say, my last, uh, just to explain, my last um, Christian teen fiction book, which was Tears, Fears, and Fame, I found myself accidentally kind of falling into a bit of a suspenseful storyline okay. with that one yeah. uh, compared to the other two. And I loved it. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is really fun. You're like, I, I like the I, intrigue. <laughs> I do like the intrigue and I naturally always gravitated towards, um, you know, Terry Blackstock and Dee Henderson and all mm -hmm. these great uh, romantic suspense authors just for my reading pleasure. Right. So that got me thinking, I wonder if I could write for grownups, you know, like, mm, yes. <laughs> like try, see if, if, if this might be even doable. Yes. Um, so how it actually all started was um, a vacation in Jamaica where I got my idea for the glass bottle and boat it's kind of a whole long story in itself <laughs> but I came I came home and started writing the manuscript and then um the love inspired harlequin line mm -hmm. they were doing like a pitch a pitch thing which okay. I thought oh that sounds fun mm -hmm. so I pitched my half written manuscript and they really liked it and said finish the manuscript and send mm -hmm. it to us by the summer so I was like oh Oh, here we go. I got a deadline now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I got that finished, sent it in, and they were like, eh, actually, no, we'll, we'll pass. So I was like, 
oh but then I was like oh, I've got a manuscript here yeah, we go at that so point I started, as well, right yeah absolutely so I started sending it out um and it was being rejected um and I was doing a whole bunch of other things at the same time so it was it was just one of the one of the things I had going on in life and then did you got, have like uh, a regular like okay this week send out a query letter this week send out, like were you doing that kind oh, of thing or yeah uh, I I remember my first rejection that I had for a magazine article back in when I first began and I literally teared up and was like so yeah. how do they not love my writing like, <laughs> I took it so personally by this point now years later I'm just like oh really okay here we go let's learn from this have they given me any feedback usually not yeah, right? right like it's a it's a nugget a golden yeah. nugget if they give you feedback yeah. and I'm the first one to jump on it and try and mm -hmm. do something about it true um, but more often than not it's either no reply or a not at this time right <laughs> so, so you just keep going it's okay um <laughs> and I got myself an agent okay at this while, point you did uh, at this point yeah okay so you pitched they said no and then you went and got an agent yeah I went to uh, a conference and okay. got an agent and he was like oh well I'll I'll take this and, okay. and let's 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 find a home for it so I was yay finally I've heard about these literary agents <laughs> I've, got, I've got one so um that <laughs> that was a very long drawn out process it took almost a year to get signed up with him mm. officially um and then it was um another year of quite sporadic communication um and then in the end it was a phone call of yeah I've had it for a year and a half and sorry it's just I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to pass so I was gutted yeah. because he'd also suggested that I write another novel in the series so I mm. just finished that and was just sent it to him so oh, man. I gave okay Rachel so this is me this is Laura the Wall so I get off that phone call I cried. I gave mm -hmm. myself 10 minutes because I'm not a crier. I gave myself 10 minutes. Then I was like, all right, next. What do I do with this manuscript? <laughs> I've now got two. So two weeks later, I pitched on um, one of the Twitter pitches. Oh, yeah. I've heard about and that. I landed, I landed a three book deal with <gasps> Anaya Press. Within two. Without, I know, with, it without was, the literary without agent. Without an agent. Yes. Wow. Yes. So do you know, have one crazy. right now? <laughs> So now I do for my next series. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you got the three book deal. It's it's a yes. trilogy. I'm assuming, right? Uh, that's yes. It is. They're all in the same series. It's the okay. Flight to Freedom series. They are standalone, so they can be read. Just pluck one out, and it makes perfect sense. But right. they are a series. Okay. Um. And so yeah. So there we go. That was kind of like a bit of a whiplash, but uh, right. <laughs> How long did it take for those to come out? Were they pretty quick or did it take a bit oh, in between each one? No, Rachel, let me tell you. After it taking six years from when I first wrote Glass Bottom Boat to mm -hmm. it actually being published, those three books all came out within the space of 12 months. My gosh. So, yeah, which... <laughs> For the record, I don't recommend. Yeah, no, that's a lot. <laughs> for, for an author's sanity, I yeah. don't recommend. I, uh, th at one point, I mean, they were great because at one point, um, the first book had launched. I was in the last round of edits for the second one, writing the third one. And I, I, I did write to them and just, I, cause I'm very deadline driven. I will get every deadline in. Mm -hmm. Like I'm very, very, very much yeah. like that. But I had to write to them and say, I think the message was something like help. <laughs> and just <laughs> can I please have just that extra couple of months just, just to get yes. the, the, the other. And they were great. They did. That's good. But they were all still, yeah, within 12 months. It was crazy. Wow. So then at that point, did you get your, did you try to get a literary agent? Is that kind of, I guess I'm just kind of like, wait, so how, why did you go with a literary agent then? If you, like up until this point, all your book deals you had gotten on your own. <laughs> I know I'm such a weird story. <laughs> you, you, you kind of are a little backwards <laughs> from the typical one. But did, did you find like so? What was the driving yeah. decision be behind getting a literary agent? Okay, okay. So here, oh yeah. 
So uh, Anaya Press is awesome. They are ebook first, which is mm-hmm. which is fine. So they 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 focus more on the ebook. They're all they are paper book as well, paperback mm-hmm. as well, um, but their focus is more ebook first. Um, and so I'm you know everything's great with them. And uh, like this novella that just came out two weeks ago, that's with them too. All good, all great. Uh, however. I wanted, I went to England uh, to stay with family a couple of years ago and had this idea for a new series. It's, it's based in the English countryside, uh, oh, yeah. Christian romantic suspense. It's the same genre. Um, and again, it's my, I do listen to my husband because as you know, he's very wise. And yes. so again, he's like, Laura, you, you really should try and get with a bigger publisher for this one. Yes. Like, come on, you've got some books under your mm-hmm. belt now. Um, so I, I was like, okay, I'm not in it. It's not like I'm in a desperate hurry. I've learned to be paid. Well, no, I haven't learned to be patient. That's a, such a lie. I'm so <laughs> impatient. <laughs> you just go with us you were like you're like okay I'm gonna say no I'm not I'm just gonna be I let's be real I am not patient I love it I I love it so much because I think we can kind of be like okay we're we're gonna be very like you know we know we gotta be patient we know we gotta be you know the process slow growth is good growth you know we're like all about that right like we hear all these buzzwords but in our souls we have these (laughs) stories that we want to tell And it takes so long sometimes to get them into the hands of a reader. And it's kind of an annoying, frustrating process. Right? Six years it took from the time you crafted Uh the glass bottom to the point in time where Uh it was in somebody's hands. That's a long time. And I think it's I think it is okay for us writers to say like that hurts and it's frustrating and it can be very annoying as a as an artist to have this piece of art that nobody is getting to experience yeah thank you you're welcome (laughs) i appreciate you being honest about it so thank you Uh, well yeah i have to be honest i have to be honest i i I suppose what i should have said was i have learned that i i need to have patience Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) is that better (laughs) yes it makes sense though it makes sense so you've gotten You've you've learned that, that patience is a part of it, a yes. part of the process, and Big part. but you've had this trip to the UK and it kind of rekindled this um, yeah. desire got, for got maybe another... a little bit mm-hmm. bigger of a publisher. And so, yeah. at that point, you decided you're going to get a literary agent, yeah, so that they yeah, can pitch. Because to, why not? And then yeah. they can pitch to bigger publishers on your behalf. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And now you, you have books under your belt. You have a a following. I'm assuming you have an email list that is growing. You've been working on that. Like this is marketing stuff that you've been doing. You've been in this for a while now. So how are you still finding it's a challenge to get in front of those bigger publishers or are they more likely to like give you a little bit more time of day because you have all of that behind Mm -hmm. you? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. What, I don't know how much difference it makes. I think at the end of the day, it's the story. Mm. I really do. You know, um, I had like my, my current agent who's amazing. Um, a lot of it is timing, you know, which is, which is actually a, as an author, it's the hardest thing in the world because the yeah. number of times I've been told, really like the story just too close to something we've just published um yeah you know it's it's just like because there's that's like that's out of your hands it It is is. and they and there's getting to be less and less spots available too well that's another thing yeah yeah there's one of the big publishers um that was that was their their comeback with this book as well it was just like i really like this but i've not got a spot until next summer so if yeah. you're still looking so maybe we will still be looking you know yeah. um and I'm okay with that um in the meantime like you just you know the agent just goes through the list of of everybody who's a good mm-hmm. fit and who they yeah. have relationships with and um I, there is a measure of comfort having an agent because for me it's like I almost do an exhale and just say okay over to you right <laughs> You there's you go do the do. hard work, right? Like you just yeah, yeah. And I assume that there's a little level of like um shielding you from the rejections. 
like you know that they aren't taking you on but to not have to open up the email yourself to have somebody else who maybe gets the email yeah first. and she'll she'll just send me like three at a time going yeah yeah so unfortunately <laughs> 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 I don't want it. Yeah, okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's yeah. you know and it's it's always a a toss-up like whether or not you know the, the whole question about literary agents like the reality is if you want to be in the traditional publishing space you have to kind of have a literary agent to get in front of those bigger publishers you have to they're the gatekeepers yeah. they really are yeah and yeah. um you can go with smaller publishers and they don't have those same kind of requirements but I was looking at just the other day, I was looking at a blog post that somebody said like, oh, here's, I think it was like a list of 10. Here's 10 Christian publishers you don't need a literary agent to submit to. And I was like, hmm, I wonder how many of these still don't require a literary agent. Mm -hmm. And out of those 10, only one would still let you submit without a literary agent. And I was like, Ooh. I wonder how old this line, and it was like only a couple yeah. year old blog post. So like the oh, reality is that it is getting harder and harder to submit to any kind of publisher without a literary agent. So um, if you want to go that route, you have to kind of play that game. And I hate to say yeah. it like that, but it is. It's kind of like you have to kind of go down that process. You have to take on a literary agent. But they do bring a level of expertise and a level of knowledge. And oh, they sure. kind of take that hit for you with the ongoing, like, repetitive putting yourself out there and getting the rejection. Yeah. They kind of take that on for you. So you're not having to feel that. So if that's like your personality, mm -hmm. or if that's what you want, then that's you, that's a good thing for you to have is to have that literary agent. And so um, you just kind of have to know what your goals are with publishing. You have to understand what your business decisions are. Like, you know, it's a business decision. You and your husband are like, okay, we're going to try for a bigger publisher. We have this underneath our belts. Like, let's go for the bigger publisher. We need a literary agent to help us do that. And so it's a calculated decision it's not a, oh, I need this because I need it to validate, be validated as a writer. It's like, no, I need this because I want to accomplish something. And so I think people need to understand that, that that's how they're, they, they need to really approach this relationship with a literary agent. It's the partnership that helps you advance your writing goals. Yeah. Dreams. Yeah. 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 They're the good guys. We, we, yeah. we want them. We want them. And also even... Um, like the, the the nuts and bolts of doing the a really good proposal, they know yeah. what a publisher is looking for. They really do, you right? Know? And, and right. they can tweak they can tweak that with you, and right. um, they can be really helpful with that side of it too. And I think it's good to know too that if you're a writer who maybe you don't want to share the profits with somebody, then don't go the traditional publishing route because like, you're going to need a literary oh, agent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's good to know that and understand that so that you can make a good calculated decision for yourself. So, so as far as, so you have this literary agent, obviously they're, you guys are pitching. So that's awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to hear what comes out of that and who, who picks up your next, <laughs> your next novel. I am excited to hear that, but you currently have um, these novels that are out with Anaya Press and you, I'm just kind of curious, like what level, like your first publisher didn't really afford too much publishing help or marketing help, but it, like we talked about, it was kind of a different time, but now that you're in the season where we rely heavily on online marketing, we rely heavily on social media and email lists and all the things, does your publisher help you with any of that? Do you get support in that way from them? Um... Or at least direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little, a little. Um, mm -hmm. Again, that's that's something which I, I'm very much. If you tell me to do something, I will do it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm a rule follower very much, and I'm just like, if you give me ten things to do to market my book, I'm going to do every single one of them. Right. Right. So, but I just need someone to tell me. I feel like we're very similar in that way. I'd be like, give me the checklist, and I will make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. not afraid of the hard work and mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to, to get out there. Um, so again, yeah, I would like to have more of, I, I would love like a marketing person in a yeah. publishing house who would be just like, okay, Laura, this is what we're going to do. This is the plan. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Mm -hmm. And I would be all over it. Right. Uh, that to me sounds like dreamy right? Yeah. <laughs> rather than uh, sort of be, I'm pretty much left to my own devices. 
to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, they 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 certainly um, they'll do things like they'll put um, the ebook on as a special so many times a year or whatever, which is great because yeah. then we can just promote and that kind of thing. Um, but. <laughs> I think uh, so much of it is down to the author now. And I was mm-hmm. even looking at an email from them uh, that I had earlier this year and they were like, to every to all the authors saying, you guys, like the, your readers want to follow you, not not us, you know, not the public. That's They're not, true. Like, readers you know, don't want to follow, a, yeah, that, the publisher. That's very interesting because I, yeah. you know, I remember going into a Christian bookstore and being like, oh, okay, if I want this particular kind of, genre i'm gonna go look for the this publisher right or if i'm at a library i'm scanning the the spines looking for the publisher's (laughs) name right because i know what kind of thing to expect from them but that's not how it really is anymore the people want to know the author they want to get to know them they want to know everything about them they want to be on their email list yeah you can you can know what they're reading you can know what they did last month where they went on vacation yeah like you can know everything (laughs) which is such a switch and I think sometimes it's really hard for writers who um especially writers who are more introverted I think you and I are more extroverted individuals even though you said you kind of have a wall and so well I'm I am I'm actually a weird bubbly introvert okay so I am like, I'm loving this and yes. I can do this for hours. Um, but like, I know we both went to a conference, a writing conference recently and I loved every minute of it. But let me tell you, I got home and I needed like a week on my own seeing nobody to fill myself back up again. <laughs> Just so you know, I did too. And I would consider oh, myself okay, more good. of an extrovert than introvert. But there That's was, good to know. Okay. I think what was unique about that conference is that we knew a lot of people there. And like, yes, that doesn't yes. always there happen a at conferences. Sh- a lot of schmoozing. A lot, yeah, yeah. a lot of relationships, <laughs> like talking to people, seeing each other. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was lovely. Yeah, which is great. But it yes. is hard. And that is something to know about. Yeah. Is that for anybody listening who is more introverted, you know, that is something that conferences, like you kind of, conferences are a really great way to make connections and to get in front of agents and editors, but they are exhausting. Mm-hmm. And so just know that if you're going to a writing conference soon and you are an introvert to kind of plan for a couple of days afterwards to kind of have some downtime <laughs> because it, it is a lot yes. you are on and it is you, you you're on because you're presenting yourself as like, I'm an author. I want to make these connections. I'm networking. And so there is a level of like, you just have to anticipate that you're going to kind of have a crash afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. A little Absolutely. bit of word of advice it, there. Yeah. So... <laughs> Now, so we have been talking about the marketing side of things. We've talked about like what kind of um, what kind of support your publisher has or has not given to you. And it sounds like you've kind of had to um, take on a lot of ownership of that. And I was starting to say that, you know, as a writer, it's it's hard to sometimes be in this like social media online marketing space because especially if you're more introverted, you know, we have these worlds that we're crafting and we're really comfortable living inside those worlds right and we're really comfortable inviting people into those worlds but to to have to share our personal lives or to share ourselves it's sometimes hard to say like okay my work doesn't define me I'm still I still have value as a person my work doesn't define me but you want to follow me as a person and so there's something validating that but yet not and it's like this weird tension that we have to kind of be in the space where we're presenting ourselves to the public and promoting ourselves but also promoting our work and it's hard to navigate that how has it been for you to navigate all of that have you learned some tricks along the way what kind of advice can you offer us oh golly that's that's a big question um yeah, it is. It is hard. It is hard to balance it all. And how much do you share and how much do you keep private? Um, I think it's a really individual thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people are happy just to lay it all out there and 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 just be totally open and vulnerable and tell them everything from the minute you get up to the minute you go to bed and mm-hmm. what you're secrets are and everything and there's <laughs> others who are just kind of you know what you don't need to know this so I think having boundaries setting your own personal boundaries is a really good idea um I know for me with my grown children they're all really private and so I don't 
sort of talk about them. However, I have a French bulldog and an English bulldog who love attention of any des- love any description. And people <laughs> love to see pictures of them. People are yeah. always, I even, um, like my English bulldog was in the last novella. And mm. a couple of people have said, that was like a, such a highlight as they read that because they knew that I had an English bulldog called Lily and I put literally, she, she same name, English bulldog oh, called Lily so is in the book. And, and so, so like it's a little just, Easter egg. It's like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, so I think knowing your own boundaries, I mean, my faith is really important to me. So I, I don't have a problem sharing about my faith um, with my nonfiction, with my fiction, with whatever. Mm-hmm. Um other people maybe they've got other sort of boundaries in there their other if they've got another job or you've just got to be yes. sensitive and 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 kind to yourself and mm-hmm. and maybe even talking to your family and seeing mm-hmm. what um you know what's appropriate what's not what's going to be helpful because you know like you could know it's all stuff about my husband and what he has for breakfast but will it be helpful in any way probably not yeah. Will it help your experience? But knowing that Lily is your bulldog and that so that they can notice her when she's in the book, that is helpful. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think too, like the, you know, something I, I have told people in the past is like, no, if you know what your boundaries are, as far as like what you're going to share on social media, it allows you to incorporate it into future projects you do right? It helps you position Mm -hmm. things. And that's exactly what you did. You know, you have this set of what you're willing to share or willing to, to engage with your audience about, and then that actually made its way into your story. And you knew that would be received well and would be something that makes the experience better for the reader. So oftentimes people want to pull apart the two things, the like craft of the novel that we're building and then the promotion and the marketing side of things and social media and um in my opinion they can meld together and they can they can kind of work together hand in hand and so i don't think we have to separate the two out um but it is hard knowing how to do that well it is i think at the end of the day a lot of people um just like to see you as well and yet you haven't got to be like walking a tightrope or, or like you know doing anything spectacular Mm -hmm. sometimes it's just they like to see you you know going for a walk in the fall leaves or yeah. did they just you know or just yeah. what this is this is what I'm reading right now you know yeah. um and just people I mean we're we're bookish people mm-hmm. obviously we have bookish followers mm-hmm. people love to know what you're reading and like yeah. want to know your views on books it doesn't it doesn't have to be rocket science like <laughs> so I noticed that you're so you have a YouTube channel where you do book reviews I noticed that I do, yeah and then you also your lead magnet is um, that if people sign up for your email list, you'll send them a list of books, right? Mm-hmm. That, yeah. yeah. So I think that's great that you've noticed that about your audience and that you've recognized like these are bookish people. They want to know more bo- about yeah. books and that you're delivering <laughs> that to them. And so have you found that to be a good um, way to get people on your email list? Is that working really well for you? Um, is there other things I that you've so. tried? Yeah. Like I, I've got a couple of other things as well. Um, when I, my first lead magnet, when, when I first learned what a lead magnet was, right. um, that was, <laughs> that lead was magnet, actually, reader uh, magnet, opt in, my gosh, they I know. Wrote so many different names. The thing that I gets know, people so on your scary. email list. Yes, that's the one. You know what, um, uh, funny my, story, funny story is that yeah, like, yeah. until I started understanding the importance of an email list, I would do everything in my power not to give people my email address to download like you know, like I'd be like looking for something and be like, oh, here's a a, par- a printable. And I'd be like, and then they would ask me for my email address. And I'm like, oh, forget, I'll just go make it myself. And I would like not oh. give people my email address, like ever. And then once I got into this world of publishing, I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, I feel so bad. Here, let me give it's- you my email address. Yes. I'll just opt out of your email list if I don't find it helpful. <laughs> but here, let me give right. you Right, my- yes. You know? I, know. I don't think it's people- It's a thing and it's, I don't it's think such a big deal, how- right? Yeah. And people don't realize how big of a deal it is. They really don't. Oh, it's huge. It's mm-hmm. huge. It really is huge. Um, but yeah, my first one that I did is um, a 31 day devotional in Proverbs 31, because okay. I was very much doing the devotional stuff. Um, and that's still actually that's something you can if you if you um, sign up, you can still choose to download that as well. That's still okay. up there. Um, and I've also got an empty nesters. um 
specific PDF on uh, keeping the marriage alive. So if, if you're an yeah. empty nester, then that they're quite specific. But generally, I find that the reading one is like good for all. You know, it's I've got yeah. a, a bunch of different genres on there, uh, Christian, historical, like a bunch of different genres. And it's just, oh, that's kind of handy. If you in case you want, what am I going to read now? I've got, yeah. like, you know. And you do, you kind of have a couple different genres and a couple different categories of books. So that is helpful that your, that particular lead magnet helps target those yeah. different readers. So with the lead magnets that are more specific to like the um, marriage and stuff do you have a funnel that directs them to the book like if oh, they that would be very it... smart <laughs> I the only funnel um I've done is maybe when I've done a blog post pertaining to that mm -hmm. uh, like on on marriage or empty nesting or whatever then I will use that particular okay. magnet so Laura your homework mm -hmm. is to go and create an email <laughs> That gets triggered once they opt in with that particular lead magnet yes. to then send them yes. an email that says, hey, if you enjoyed this about keeping your emptiness alive, <laughs> maybe you'll yes. enjoy the oh, marriage yes. book. Oh, no. Yes, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, that's true. It does, it will, it does take them just to my, to my newsletter. So they do sign up for my newsletter. So I do get them. <laughs> you get them, but now you need to promote them. I do tonight. get them. <laughs> yes, that's true. I do. Yes. Yeah. I, and yeah, I say sure. this, oh, I say awesome. that like, I'm so great at this, but I have so many broken funnels of my own <laughs> that I need to fix. So <laughs> it is I such know. a hard it's thing so, to keep a lot. track of, of it. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is a lot. And honestly, honestly, yeah, it's just, just keeping the website up to date, like just with, heck, with just all, like even with to Instagram, <laughs> oh, just, just, <laughs> just posting like, Hey, Oh crap. I haven't posted in like, ugh, like four days. Maybe I can say something, you know, I know. I know. It's a juggling thing. It, it is, really is. It is a juggling yeah. thing. So have you found any tools or resources that were are that have been particularly helpful to you in either crafting or the juggling all the business things that you think every fiction writer should have at their disposal? Uh well Scrivener is a great tool, I would say, for well for any writer, but mm -hmm. um specifically for fiction writers. I've I came across that several years ago and was like this looks a little scary, but I'm going to give it a whirl. It and I love scary. it. Like, it's, it's so, not, I'm sure, I know I'm not using it to its absolute potential. Oh, no, it's potential. so robust. It is so robust. Yeah, it yeah. really is. It and really I'll is. link to but the even, show notes for those of you yeah. who want to check out Scrivener. It is, it is a very yeah. good tool, but it is very robust. There are tutorials out it there, is. so Google them. And I think there's even like a, I think there's like a 30-day trial period to use mm -hmm. it as well, yeah. just to see if and it's, it's a not fit 30 for you. At least it didn't used to be 30 days. It used to be 30 times you open it. So when right, I first yeah. signed up for it. 30 it, separate days. Yeah. Yes. So you can, yeah. you, can, you should be <laughs> writing all the time. But if you're like me who writes sporadically, <laughs> you can string it out. Yeah. <laughs> Probably it's shouldn't so be great, telling people can... how to get around the trial period, but there's a way. I, well, I feel like you probably would want to buy it after you've used it for a yeah. few days anyway. It, right? It's actually very inexpensive and it's a one-time fee. So yes, it's not a subscription. It it's it's a very yeah. affordable, it's a great tool. It's worth every penny. It yeah. Is. Yeah. And for me, I'm very visual. So having like a literal picture of the, my character on the same page while I'm writing about her yes. is like huge. And then all your research, you can put everything all in one place. It's genius, I mm. think. Um, so Scrivener has been really, really good. Um, and then just for, um, it's not a tool, but just for something that's really helped me because uh, many of us aren't just one one trick ponies. Yeah. <laughs> We're not just like one genre of this is all we write all the time. Um, it's just making, I literally put a line through every single day, Monday to Friday, right in the middle of the day. And I have a block. So in the morning, I'm going to be doing maybe all my social media posts for the week or whatever it might be. And then uh, for me, I'm creative in the afternoon, which is again, another one of my quirky things, but I'm just once everything is all settled and I can sit down going, everything's done, then mm -hmm. I can get my creator cre creativity on. So and then in the afternoon, I might be working on this novel. Um, okay. But I, I, just chunk, chunking things up because um, I, like I say, I, I write Sunday school curriculum. I do devotions. Mm -hmm. I do as well as the novel yeah. stuff. And I'm still, just so you know, that I haven't landed at my full dream at the moment. I still want a picture book published. Oh, that is really? Still my dream. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. 
Okay. I, I have I have multiple <laughs> mul I keep taking more and more okay. courses and I have several um manuscripts out there. I have had a, a an agent um who stopped being an agent but um she she had my stuff for a year or so so that's still I think it's important to still have dreams I really oh, yes, do I'm sure. taking carrying my husband's mantle with that and saying yeah like just you've always got to have a dream and mm. and so that's still that's still mine and I think it's that's it's awesome. fun to have something that's still out there that little carrot you know that's yes. dangling <laughs> yeah so a goal to work towards I love the idea of how you're blocking your days like that's really that's really yeah. wise to do that I, to know like at this point I'm putting on the entrepreneur hat and at this point I'm putting yeah. on the writer hat and being able to yeah. kind of designate those two days to help you just like mentally get into the right space for creativity mm -hmm. or for task management. Like those are two different yeah. modes and being able to Definitely. visually kind of break up your day that way is really wise. Um, and then too, to know that you do better with creativity in the afternoons, like that's to know that about yourself, I think is really helpful. Like when do you mm -hmm. do the best work and how can we protect that time and make sure that it's there for us when we need to write? That's really good. So as we wrap up, what kind of advice do you have for that first time author who is getting into this publishing industry, into this publishing world, who has a story, they want to share it with somebody? What advice do you have for them? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, as you as you've heard from my story, no, there's there's no one right way of doing this. Mm -hmm. um, I would say just keep writing. And uh, don't be intimidated. There is there's there's so many there's so many different things to this other than just the writing of the book. But don't be intimidated. Get your story down. Mm. That I think is 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 hugely important because we can get so distracted with everything else. Get your story down and um, find even a crack of the day to to get it. It doesn't have to all be done in six months. If if it takes you six years it will be worth it in the end to mm -hmm. just keep finding those little cracks of time to work on your story and keep, keep writing. And mm -hmm. if, if it takes you in a different tangent, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> yes. Follow, follow the story. Oh, honestly honestly and for you and for the, the listeners who who are christians as well honestly just pray pray the dickens out mm. of it because i think that has honestly kept me sane um just mm. knowing that god's timing is perfect mine is definitely not even though i think it's really good um ultimately it's god's timing um that is is perfect every single opportunity he gets he he reminds me that and it's like yeah i have to just put it all before him and go, I do the, I'll do the hard work, mm -hmm. then it's over to you. Yes. I love <laughs> that. We're going to show up. We're going to do the work, but we're going to put the yeah. outcome into his hands Trust. and into his timing. Yeah. Yes. Trust I love him. it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Laura, so much for joining us. I'll make sure to link to all the stuff that you have oh, for people, all the resources you. that you have to your books and all that. Um, but where can people most likely engage with you? Is it Instagram? Is it Facebook? Where can they follow you and support you? Oh, yes. Well, everything is on my website. So that's um, lauratomasauthor.com. So I'm also a writing coach. So I do my writer's coaching, yes. my blog, all my books and all my social links are all on the website. Um, if you love social media, Instagram is probably my favorite, if I'm going to be honest. Yes. And I'm at Laura C. Thomas. Uh, but yeah, come sign up for my newsletter and, and get some freebies and, and have a monthly um, fun. I love doing my newsletter. I used to hate it. And I've learned to absolutely love doing it. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, come, come join us. I'd love oh, that. Lovely. Well, thank you again for joining us. And thank you just for sharing your journey, sharing how it has just it's taken a windy path, but you've trusted God mm -hmm. with the timing of it all. And I just think that's the beautiful reminder to us as we get to work that we need to trust him with the outcome. And just to know that we can make smart business decisions and it's okay to pivot and it's okay to, um, to make different changes along the way, whether that's to move to a new publisher, move to a new agent, or to even pick up an agent <laughs> after having published without <laughs> an agent, whatever the decision it needs to be, um, to be confident that we can make those decisions for ourselves and for our writing journey, I think is just a good reminder for each and every one of us. So thank you again 
for joining us. I really do appreciate it. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Rachel. (laughs) You're welcome. And thank you to listener for joining in with us today and meet back here next week as we continue this conversation about the business of Christian fiction. Bye. 